Despite rising costs and delays, the Conservatives have vehemently defended their plan to buy F-35 stealth fighters. But today, the first sign the deal may be shot down. We have not as yet uh, discounted uh, our, our, uh, the possibility, of course, of the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, backing out of any of, of the program. While insisting the F-35 is still top choice, Julian Fantino conceded it's now a big if. The determinate decision has not as yet been made as to whether or not we are going to actually purchase, buy, acquire the F-35. The jet hit turbulence as some cash-strapped partners in the U.S.-led project cut orders. Italy chopped from 131 to 90, Australia from 14 to 2, and the Netherlands order is on hold. Two weeks ago, Canada convened a consortium meeting with manufacturer Lockheed Martin, and talk of a higher price tag may explain Fantino's retreat. I think he had a reality check and uh, you, however you want to spell check. They're in serious trouble here. The, this, pro, this, this program is not working. It's not flying. Literally, it's not flying. The opposition has long demanded that the Tories scrap the sole source project and look for other planes, but the Tories attack them for denying the military the best equipment. Some other plane. Which one? Well, they don't know. Some other plane. Unbelievable. Now some That's see a possible lead. about it's face. They're trying to create some wiggle room for themselves if this project really continues to go as badly as it's going right now. Fentino admitted work is underway on a plan B to find an alternative if necessary, but he still wants the F-35, and prospective buyers are meeting again this week in Australia to try to keep the project flying. Lisa. Okay, Roger Smith in Ottawa tonight. Welcome to Power Play for March 13th. It was 21 years ago today when Canada signed that uh, clean air treaty with the U.S. of A. And we haven't heard much of acid rain ever since. Brian Mulroney, good on you. Okay, coming up on the show, overhead spending is still rising. Pink slip severances could cost hmm, a lot of money. And those MP pensions are still obscenely lucrative. The federal spending czar is here to discuss an upcoming and apparently overdue culture shift. Two Western premiers are in trouble and scrambling damage control ahead of oncoming elections. Our eyes on Alberta and B.C. will wrap up today's show with their views. But first, after months of defiant support for buying the troubled F-35 stealth jet fighter, the government minister did a bit of reverse thrust today. Here's what he said. Canada remains involved in the Joint Strike Fighter program. Uh, but the if uh, pertains to the decision, the determinate decision has not as yet been made as to whether or not we are going to actually purchase, buy, acquire the F-35. Well, the procurement minister wasn't available, but his very credible backup is here. Defense <laughs> Parliamentary Secretary Chris Alexander we'll joins <laughs> Liberal Defense Critic John McKay and Deputy Procurement Critic Matt Kelway. Welcome to you all. Especially to you, Matt, for the first time. I've had you on the show. All right. The word if entered the purchase equation for the government today. I hadn't heard that before. Chris Alexander, you starting to back away a bit from the F-35? Well, first I'd like to put in a plug for Stan Darling. Clean Air Act, acid rain. Let's remember You're him as well. You're changing the topic, Chris. Uh, but, but secondly, and on, your, on today's topic, um, the F-18s are not at but approaching the end of their useful lives. We know that. Um, there has been a lot of due diligence done, a lot of preparation done to look at options over years, liberal government, conservative government. There is a plan shared by us with nine other nations to participate in completing the development of a new very advanced aircraft. Uh, and we remain committed to that project. We remain part of that. That's what the meeting in Washington was about. That's what many of the questions in committee and were about today and, and in the House every day. But I think what we're rediscovering today, Don, Canadians deserve to know this, but we've actually known it for a long time, that a plan, a commitment under an MOU to development of this aircraft, together with other nations, does not yet involve a contract does not yet involve purchase. We had the estimates in front of the committee mm -hmm. today for 2012, 2013. They do not incur, include costs for the CF, uh, the, the F-35, because that's e the earliest date for procurement is still years down the road. 
So the minister is absolutely right to say we don't have finan hard financial commitments yet in this respect. But as we heard in committee as well, there are no other options on the table at the moment. Okay, we're participating in the development Matt, of, Matt this, of this platform, and, and we're proud of it. You, you've been pushing this hard all along, uh, and the talking points have been pretty straight up on this. There were no ifs, no buts. This is only the only stealth jet fighter in the market is the F-35. We got to buy it, and nothing else. Are yeah. they changing their tone? Yeah, no. I think we've seen. In fact, I think we've seen the tone change since we resumed uh, late January, where uh, the minister started to slip into his responses that there's no contract, and and he's done so with some emphasis. Uh, I think today's news. Um, and the interesting part about it is there is, in fact, a project planning team that's being put together in the department to look at alternatives. So I think Chris is, uh, I think, if I might say, misinterpreting the minister's <laughs> remarks today, that, that clearly they, they uh, are looking for an alternative, and it appears that there's a climb down from the F-35. Okay, John? Well, I agree with uh, Matthew's uh, analysis. It is, it's um, puzzling as to why the government has been so uh, adamant about 65 planes, 75 million a plane, $9 billion program for so long and when uh, there was virtually no one outside the Conservative caucus actually believed them. So today was, um, was actually newsworthy in that the minister said, yeah, actually we are noodling about alternatives um, and we are noodling with um, General uh, Deschamps and the Air Force and we're thinking about uh, you know, what if. And the what if is a big what if, um, and frankly, he'd be negligent if he wasn't. So I'm glad. I'm actually glad to hear what the minister said today. It was a welcome change of tone. I'm glad. We're going to bring that up before I go to you, Chris. Matt, it is the right thing to say, though, isn't it? What the minister is saying now that yeah. we have our doubts. We have to look yeah. at alternatives. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, Chris talks about there being a plan in place now, but there isn't one. I mean, the the F-35 program is a mess. Uh, the, the program manager said a long time ago that this concurrency uh, concept uh, which, with which they proceeded was a miscalculation. Uh, the price keeps going up. Uh, production keeps getting delayed. So there's no clear price. There's no clear production date. Um, and so there's no plan right now. Chris, so this is certainly a welcome change. Chris Alexander, is there an alternative to the F-35? Or is it just keep extending the life of the CF-18? Or are there other options we could seriously look at? Well, as, as we've heard from the Chief of the Royal Canadian Air Force several times in committee, um, the life of the CF-18 is being extended uh, to sort of its maximum lifespan. <laughs> and there, and there, are different, yeah. there are different scenarios for More how much work would need to be done to extend it, depending on when the F-35 comes on stream. But, <clears throat> In terms of the requirements we have set, and which started to be set actually under a Liberal government, uh, were, were reconfirmed, revalidated under this government, uh, to have an advanced aircraft, to have an aircraft uh, that could achieve and maintain air superiority, ensure the survivability of missions for our pilots, bring them back safely, uh, patrol this huge land and sea mass that is our responsibility. Uh, the F-35 is the only uh, model from the new generation mm -hmm. featuring stealth and other uh, advanced characteristics uh, that is available to Canada. Okay. So yes, there are other aircraft available, but they would not meet some or many of the requirements that we've set. And, and let's think about Canada's Air Force. From the First World War to now, you know, John has been I quoted... I was not there for the First World War, I want you to know. No, but John has been quoted saying... <laughs> Where's Craig that, Oliver when you need him? John has been quoted saying that we don't lead. You know, we aren't the first ones in. Well, Tell the families of Billy Bishop or, or yeah. Barker that they were not the first ones oh, there, oh, or were oh, oh, the pilots well, who were flying over yeah, Libya. Yeah, okay. They I were there that. alone yeah. uh, sometimes, <laughs> and, and it is important. No, this is important. It is important to have the best technology. Speaking of planes, there was a time uh, not too long ago when a whole series of planes flew over this building. It lasted for 30 seconds. The tab for recognizing the Libya mission is over $800,000, while the military is in cutback mode. Matt, did we get value for our money, or should the money have been saved and done something else with it? Well, the, the, the Canadian soldiers who partic participated in that mission need to be honoured, but clearly uh, the government lost control of the costs on this one and, and grossly, frankly, doubling uh, their original estimates. Yes? There were over a dozen aircraft involved. Uh, this was part of, this was scheduled into their regular training, which they would be doing anyway. 
to remain current on those aircraft, including new aircraft, like the big C-17 uh, transport aircraft, which has served us so well in Haiti and so forth. The costs that have been cited in these articles, many of them, half of them, would have been incurred uh, anyway. The other cost, the incremental cost, we think, uh, served as a fitting tribute to a very successful mission. And we should do that as we do on, not just on November 11th, for past missions, now long in the past, but for to celebrate what Canadian soldiers, airmen, sailors are achieving today. John, I want to we get to you worth it. quickly on this because I wonder what the cost is going to be for the Afghan uh, well, veterans. That is the point. <laughs> uh, there's no doubt that our men and women, in, uh, in particular General Bouchard, has served us well. There's no question about that, and, and there is, and it's appropriate to do a recognition ceremony of some kind. Um, but that was a six-month mission. Uh, it was uh, tightly contained. It was quite, quite successful as a mission. Um, there's an issue about after, uh, after the mission. Uh, but um, we've been in Afghanistan for 10, 12 years, I guess. By, by the time it's 2014, it'll be, a, it'll be quite a number of years. And the, the real question is, well, what do we do then? Uh, and you, you know, you, you have uh, inevitable comparisons yeah. between Afghanistan and Libya, um, so it is a bit of a dangerous precedent okay. and uh, a far over the estimated budget. John Mac John McKay, Matt Calway, and Chris Alexander, thanks for you all coming on. Appreciate that.